It's the Who Rescued Whom Canine Rescue Tales podcast, and we're your hosts, John and Diane. Our guests today are Wayne and Caroline, who currently reside in South Carolina. We met them while vacationing in 2018. We became fast friends for many reasons, but we'd say we are actually more like kindred spirits in that they are dog rescue people like us. We connected immediately. All their lives, they've had a passion for animals. Wayne and Caroline have rescued 11 dogs over the years, each one having their own story of how they were saved by the opening of their home and their gracious and loving hearts. We will hear about four of their rescues today, Buster, Abby Grace, Hope, and Doc. Friends tell them they are hopeless adopters. No one is surprised when a new little canine arrives in their lives. Here's Caroline. My first love was always animals and in whatever way I could be around them. Thankfully, my husband feels the same way. Now that we have some more time on our hands, we're just really enjoying our time with our dogs. But even when we were working full time, gosh, we had so many dogs, but somehow we managed it. Maybe all the dogs just gave us peace and joy after a long day's work. So it's kind of been a lifelong project for us. We asked Wayne and Caroline to tell us about Buster. Um, Well, I just start smiling and giggling when you just said his name. He's just, (laughs) of course, I feel that way about all of our dogs, but he was a goofy dog. I was coming home from an animal shelter function and uh, I came across a little puppy on the side of the road. Wayne was riding behind me and I pulled up and there are two puppies in this. And Wayne pulled up behind me, and he's like, what now? And I said, found a puppy again, <laughs> another puppy. And this poor little guy was, he had blood, and we thought he was badly injured. The sad part that Caroline didn't tell you was that just ahead of us was a younger driver in a you know, revved-up car that was speeding. And uh, it turns out that you know, two puppies were crossing the road, and and one was killed, and Buster survived. This is when we were living in West Virginia. There was only one all night shelter uh, open at that time, and it was about a forty five minute drive. But we took him down there, and um, of course, we're both looking at each other like, you know, we don't need another dog at this point. But then they looked at us and said, "What's his name?" and we had to come up with something. So, you know, it's like, well, his name's Buster. And we uh, both just looked at each other and said it. Yeah. We uh, were calling him that. We were saying, hang in there, Buster. Yeah. Be okay, Buster. We're yeah. going to get you to the vet. And so we were setting ourselves up. You know, we were with him throughout the night. And lo and behold, by daybreak, his name was Buster. And then we took him home with us. And, uh, you know, he had basset hound ears and a droopy face. I mean, we used to call him slobber huck because he seemed to leave a uh, path of drool wherever he went, but he was just a great, lovable soul. After 11 joyous years together, Buster passed away from cancer. But their home was never without a dog. Whether they stumbled upon a dog in need of help or a dog stumbled upon them in search of a loving family, fate continued to lead them to one another and enriched their lives. Science fiction author Dean Kuntz said, Once you have had a wonderful dog, a life without one is a life diminished. Wayne and Caroline lost another dog named Annie. But years later, Annie's twin found them. Losing Annie was very difficult. A few years later, one night, we're at home, and a neighbor calls and tells Caroline that there's a stray dog in the neighborhood, and she wants Caroline to come out and help her determine what breed of dog this is. Isn't and, that sneaky, a way of getting us to look yeah, at the dog? Yeah, I can I can see this coming because she knew that we were suckers for, you know, I'm begging Caroline not to go out. Caroline goes out, and then she comes back in the house as if she's seen a ghost, and she looks at me and she goes, you've got to come out here. And I'm like, no, I don't. She's like, no, seriously, you really need to come out here. So, you know, I put a jacket and shoes on and she looked 
exactly like Annie. I mean, it gave me chills. You know, at the time, we had four other dogs, and I believe they were all male. Oh, yes. So the first night that Abby Grace stayed in our house, she stayed alone in the garage. And then the next day, of course, Caroline was really worried that, you know, it's like, well, you know, I think we're really going to have to take this slow and we're going to have to introduce her one at a time to the other dogs. And there was just something about this little puppy. I could just tell by looking in her eyes. It's like she's fearless and she's got so much spirit about her. You know, I told Caroline, I said, no, just let all of them out in the backyard and I'm going to come around the side and I'm going to let her out there with them. Caroline and I got the biggest kick for the next half hour or so watching our four larger male dogs chase after this little black puppy with panda paws. I mean, she was like a little running back. She was just juking and, you know, just in and out. And, you know, a half hour later, our four guys are just, they're all lying down, uh, gasping. And, and, and Abby's still prancing around the yard. And from that moment on, it's like she was Queen Bee. She just owned it. We also asked them to tell us about their pot cake puppy, Hope. Yeah, so Wayne and I were celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary, and we thought, well, let's go somewhere special. So we chose the Turks and Caicos Islands. I don't know why. Maybe it's because we're such dog people. But I decided to do some research about the island. And, of course, the first thing I research is what's the homeless dog situation on Turks and Caicos. <laughs> I was just curious. And I found out, told Wayne, there's a place called Pot Cake Place. Pot Cakes or what they call the street dogs in Turks and Caicos, really basically in the Caribbean islands. And they're, they're called that because the locals uh, will make large pots of conch and, and rice chowder and stew. And... The burnt remains of the stew on the bottom, they would scrape out of the pot and they're kind of caked up remains and they would throw them out to the street dogs because the humans didn't want them. That, so that's how they got the name pot cake. So I guess they called the little scrapes of food pot cakes and they fed them to the dogs. So the dogs became pot cakes. So our first full day, we didn't go to the beach. We went over to this pot cake place to, to see the puppies and make a donation. <laughs> and um, we walked out of there two hours later without a puppy. We were so proud of ourselves. So we went about our vacation and the next day we were walking down the beach, minding our own business. <laughs> and we see a little pot cake puppy being walked by a little girl and her parents. And we said, oh, is that a pot cake puppy? And they said, yes, her name is Hope. And um, I put my hand down and just cradled her chin in my, in my hand. And she just looked at us she was so shy she was not in good shape no oh she was well so bad for her um she was being walked actually by pot cake place volunteers a lot of people who vacation will volunteer to walk these dogs we had about a 20 minute walk back to our hotel neither of us said a word <laughs> because i think we're we were both thinking and afraid to say it out loud and then uh we just started talking about it, you know, and I don't know if you remember the rest of it, Wayne, exactly how it went about. Our last day, Caroline's in the shower and, you know, we're all packed and I'd already called a cab to take us to the airport and I called Pot Cake Place and uh, they remembered us and uh, I asked them, I said, how difficult is it to adopt a, a pot cake? They wanted to know which one we were looking at. I said, Hope. And they were just thrilled because Hope had a bad case of mange and she had had some other ailments. And the reason why they named her Hope was the, the first night she arrived at the pot cake place, they didn't think she was going to make it through the night. And they gave her the name Hope. The pot cake place immediately got the needed adoption and travel paperwork together and waited for Wayne and Caroline's arrival. When Caroline got out of the shower, I uh, gave her the good news that, hey, uh, we're going to be making a stop 
and uh, she was thrilled. And, uh, and I, I want to point out that I think that not normally does the adoption process go so quickly, but you have to remember about three days before, four days before, we had spent at least two hours in there, and they remembered us very right. well. And, you know, so they knew who we were. Right. So. And, and and I think they were also desperately wishing to find a home for Hope. So happy. Boy. Yeah. I mean, we were so yeah. happy yeah. with her. Yeah. I was just thrilled. Never expected it. You yeah. know, go away on our 20th anniversary vacation and come back with a puppy. But we've had people, well, you guys would do that. That, does, that doesn't surprise us too much. <laughs> <laughs> With each episode, in honor of our guests, the Who Rescued Whom Canine Rescue Tales podcast makes a $25 donation to the rescue of their choice. We are happy to make this episode's donation to Pot Cake Place in Turks and Caicos, in honor of Wayne, Caroline, and Hope. Pot Cake Place is the only dog rescue charity based in Providenciales, Turks and Caicos Islands. They adopt out 100% of all of their rescues to approved, screened homes throughout the Turks and Caicos Islands and North America. They run solely on donations, and their mission is to reduce the number of homeless pot cakes on the island. If you are ever in the area, much like Wayne and Caroline were, they ask you to pop in, meet some puppies, and learn more about what they do. They have a constant stream of puppies needing socialization and adoption. You can go by and even take a puppy out for a walk. They'll give you everything you need. You just need to supply some TLC. You can learn more about Pot Cake Place and see pictures of Hope by clicking on the link to their website on the episode page of our website, whorescuedwhom.com. Hope is doing great and enjoys her new home and pack members. Next, Wayne and Caroline told us about Doc. He was found at five weeks old, I abandoned in a field in Georgia when we lived in Georgia. And some friends of mine who are volunteering to shelter said, you got to see this dog. And uh, Wayne went down to see it. And he said, oh, that's, you know, we're we're getting this dog. I'd always wanted a golden retriever. And he looked a lot like a golden retriever. And Wayne brought him home. And I fell in love with dog. Oh, he's just so cute. Always smiling, even as a puppy. We named him Doc after a dear friend of ours, I don't think I've ever seen a, a happier soul. He just woke up happy and and, yeah. and went to bed happy. And in between, he just lived life to the fullest. I mean, he just couldn't understand why Hope would want to be lying around. <laughs> it's just like, you know, I mean, let's go chase something. You know, it's, it's a great day out there. Let's go seize it. time, Doc's time came. He developed a mysterious disease that caused unexplained seizures. They took him to a specialist clinic where a team of 12 doctors each played a hand in trying to figure out what was wrong with him. The best they could conclude was that it was probably tick related. Consequently, Doc had heart problems, gallbladder, and bone problems. One thing after another. This disease was taking over. It was winning, and um, we had to make that decision, sadly, on Wayne's birthday, but it, he couldn't suffer anymore, and it was a way to show love for him. You know, when, if we can do that for them and take the, the pain away from them, we don't want them to suffer, and we just have to put our dogs first and not our feelings and do it for them. Because of another recently rescued dog, Wayne got to spend some quality time with Doc in his last few weeks. One major blessing for me, we had adopted Charlie Buck. And Charlie Buck was so afraid of men, period, that Caroline had no other choice but to coddle him. So I got to spend some good quality time with Doc that I may not have had if Charlie Buck Mm -hmm. hadn't been in the picture. And Caroline and I even talked about that. It really was nice that they had that, they'd spend more time together. And then having Charlie Buck has been a lifesaver. 
in our grieving over Doc. Wayne and Caroline told us that each and every one of the 11 dogs they rescued have impacted them in numerous ways. Each and every one of our dogs has a very special place in our hearts. Every one of them was unique. They all have made us laugh and brought us immense joy. They knew love and happiness and comfort and safety. And in return, we have been beyond blessed um, by having them in our lives. These dogs have given more to us than we've given to them. And they've enriched our lives more than we've enriched theirs. There's something special about the relationships that people have with their dogs. And there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. I mean, I have felt it in my heart and in my soul, and I've witnessed it in others. So it's a live thing. Caroline and I have always been drawn to rescue animals. Just leave your hearts open to it. One of life's wonderful connections and one of God's great gifts, Uh, just that relationship. It's mind, body, and spirit. You know, the dog is all in and you're all in. And, you know, we really try to encourage people like, well, you know, you really, you know, consider rescuing because they're already here and they need help. So just go visit a shelter and look at the conditions they're living in and look and just think how much better you can make their lives. Some people, after a pet passes away, understandably find it hard to think about getting another. Wayne and Caroline have some good advice. We've known so many people that have had a dog and have lost it and You know, it's like, I'm never going to have another dog. I'm not going to do it. You know, losing that dog was just too much for me to handle. I think any dog owner would tell you that we all wish dogs lived longer. And the hardest part of being a dog owner is when it comes time to say goodbye. I think the one thing that gives us uh, added peace is being able to reflect and know that, hey, you know, do you remember the night or the day that we rescued this little guy or this little girl? They were not in a good place. You know, it just makes the process of letting go and and letting them move on to their better place a bit easier. Diane and I have gone through that ourselves. But in the years spent with a rescue dog, or even sometimes just days, as it was with our rescue dog, Stormy, in 2015, who was with us only 25 days, that precious time and shared life experiences, giving that dog years or just quiet days of peace, safety, happiness, love, and comfort. For us, the tears and heartache that follow their departure are replaced by the satisfaction that for a time, that dog knew love and that possibly for the first and only time in their life felt that they were part of a pack, part of a loving family. That feeling of giving them a true home for however long and thinking that if not us, then who? Well, it makes it all worth it, and we choose to believe that we will see them again someday down the road. I don't know why. I I can't think of the words right now, but I just saw a little meme on social media that really touched my heart and it was a picture of two dogs like up in heaven and they were little angel wings and one dog turned to the other dog and said you know they still talk about you he said yeah i know and that just touched my heart and there's another one where peter at the gates of heaven and and a man comes in and he says oh you must be little bobby he's an older man he said you know rufus has been talking about you for years There was a famous Southern writer, a humorist uh, named uh, Louis Grizzard. He was something else. He wrote about his dog a lot and also wrote about when his dog passed. And it's one of my favorite prints. After Grizzard passed, um, someone did this caricature of Louis Grizzard 
entering heaven and his faithful dog was jumping into his arms. It's like, you know, that kind of says it all. We'll see them once again. There you go. I, I remember as a kid, there was one episode of uh, Twilight Zone where an uh, elderly man and his dog, and his dog was old as well, and they lie down to rest uh, by this tree, and they both passed away, uh, the, the man and his dog. And, you know, but they get up and they continue walking and they're greeted. This individual is presenting himself to be St. Peter. And it's like, you know, hey, we've been waiting for you. Welcome. And, you know, the old man's getting ready to enter and he's telling his dog, you know, come on, buddy. And the guy says, well, you know, I'm sorry, you know, dogs aren't allowed. And he said, well, you know, I'm sorry, but if he's not allowed, I'm not coming in. He walks further up the road, and lo and behold, it's the real heaven. He says, now, is Buddy invited? And they're like, well, of course he is. We've got his name right here alongside yours. We've been waiting for both of them. That's uh, one of the few real happy episodes of uh, The Twilight Zone. <laughs> If there are no dogs in heaven, then when I die, I want to go where they went. Will Rogers. This podcast was edited and produced by Mike McClellan at podcastps.com. Mike also wrote, performed, and produced all the original music that you heard on this episode. <laughs>